Hey guys, Joseph Ratzenbach here, and in this video I'm going to be showing my thermoelectric or Peltier mini fridge. Now I built this using a Peltier cooler, um, I'll show that in a minute, and that's what actually delivers the cooling. And then I built it around a polystyrene box, if you're American that would be a styrofoam box. Uh, Heatsink, PC fan, and then a really nice temperature controller, now that's for actually setting and controlling your temperature. Now for power, it takes 12 volts, so I'm using an ATX power supply it's from a computer, but it's modified to give 12 volt access. So I'm going to explain how it works, um, how to use it, and then how to build your own. Now this project is um, possible due to a really nifty component called a Peltier cooler. Now this thing is a ceramic plate, and it's got two wires coming out of it. And it's very special because when you give it 12 volts DC, this one for example, one side gets really really hot and the other gets really really cold so if you were to use that cold side for cooling down things it works perfectly now the hot side there is a trick to this thing you can't actually expect sort of coldness to come off forever you have to get rid of the heat from the hot side for the cold side to actually be cold now you can do this using a heat sink a heat sink is a block of metal which absorbs the heat and then distributes it and then spreads it out into the air so here you get the hot side which is this one and then you secure it onto the heat sink and you would make sure that it makes good contact so that all of that heat is going to flow into this metal block and then go into the air you would use something called thermal paste which is sort of a paste that you put on here and you do this because there's always going to be microscopic gaps between the Peltier plate and the actual metal block you're never going to get perfect contact so once you've got your thermal paste and everything holding it down then this side would be cold assuming you've got power and this gets so cold in fact I've measured it on one of mine at negative 15 degrees Celsius which is freezing and this is actually perfect for what we want to do so now you'd actually put another heat sink on the other side and use a fan to actually blow the cold air around in the enclosure now here inside this polystyrene box for my fridge I've actually got two heat sinks one for the outside and then one on the inside too you can't actually see the one on the, on the inside now I'm not actually gonna open it because I'm cooling it down and I want to get it as cold as possible but there's a second one a bit smaller than this this is the hot heat sink and the hot heat sink on the outside is actually blowing away that hot air now on the inside it's just the cold one, it's a bit smaller. Now here I've got an example, two heat sinks and a Peltier cooler. Now it's a bit difficult to see, but you can see there's the Peltier cooler in the middle. It's not the neatest, the thermal paste there is a bit messy, it's like a grey. And then, uh, yeah, this is your cold side, and this here is the hot side. And then this is simply an aluminium block, it takes the heat still it's just so you've got actual space to put the polystyrene insulation between the two the, yeah the two surfaces now this Peltier cooler draws 12 volts at about three and a half amps which is a lot of power pretty much like 50 watts now to get to supply this much power you need quite a beefy power supply in this example I'm going to use a uh, 12 volt battery that's just connect it for a few seconds. Now already the cold side is freezing cold and the hot side which is this other side it was so hot I couldn't actually touch it and that was only about after three seconds of runtime which is amazing that's why it's so important to use a heatsink to get rid of that heat. So if you can get rid of that heat you can maintain a really cold temperature. So and that's why it's so vital. If you were to leave this thing for about 20 seconds without, or 20, 30 seconds without a heat sink, it might actually burn out. So, on to power. Here, I'm going to be using a 12 volt ATX power supply. Now, this was from an old computer, but I've modified it. I've taken out all of the other cables and leaving it with just the 12 volt power cable. So, 12 volt DC. And the, I also modified it to stay on all the time. Normally these things only turn on when the computer is on, but obviously there's no computer here, so it needs to be on constantly. The power is fed through a DC barrel jack, some connectors, and then eventually it reaches the Peltier cooler, which is in here. 
powers the fan and everything, but it goes to this interesting thermostat. Now, the thermostat is what essentially runs this whole system. So right now you can see it says 2.3 degrees. And to, and to adjust that temperature, it's actually very easy. It's got buttons. So right now, here, just for interest sake, it's set at 1 degrees, currently at 2.3, and then you could increment or decrement the temperature, and it would maintain that pretty well. Okay, now on the inside of this fridge, you can see there is a second heatsink, and it's a little smaller than the first. The reason being, it, this is the cold side, and they really, they, it's not like the hot side where you're actually dissipating all of that heat, because you need to get rid of it. The cold side, it's more about simply circulating that uh, cooler air around the enclosure, so it doesn't need to be as big. And then a fan for the air. And then this little thing here is a thermistor. Now, this is the temperature probe, which goes to the temperature controller. Now, inside this box, it is a little messy, and you can see there's actually water there. This happens, yeah, because the water condenses on this heatsink as it gets cold. Um, I do need to clean it out, but it works fine. And it's not going to leak anywhere. I mean, it's sealed, so I'll just dry it periodically. Now, it's actually very small inside. You can see my hand basically fits in the distance between the fan and the and the wall so it's not that big but you can fit six cans inside here which is actually really not bad for what I'm gonna do with it it works perfectly and a note if you're gonna be making your own you're gonna you're gonna have a really hard time if you're trying to do it with something anything bigger like a cooler box you, if you're using one of these Peltiers with a big cooler box it's not really gonna work you're gonna need a bigger Peltier this one's three and a half amps you're going to need something quite a bit bigger. You can actually use multiple Peltiers to get the same, or the cooling required. It's a really finicky thing. You can get some things that work great, like this one. And if you're going with this size of box, proper heat sinks, you can't really go wrong. But something else, if you're going bigger, it can be difficult to get it working right. So if you have any questions about my design or anything, just feel free to ask. I'm happy to help. I'll put links for all of the parts required, the Peltier temperature stuff, and then of course how to use or modify your power supply. You, if you're in a car, you can just use the cigarette plug from the car battery, that'll work great. But yeah, once again, everything will be in the description. So yeah, feel, feel free to ask anything you need, and I hope this has been useful.